All right, y'all. Um, sorry I was a few minutes late. Uh, technical difficulties, but I'm here now. So <laughs> we're going to go ahead on and jump in. Remember I told you if anything happens and you don't see me right at 2.30, it's some type of technical problem. So, uh, but don't leave because I'll be here. Okay. All right. Okay, let's, um, I'm trying to see some stuff. Okay, so let's say a word of prayer and we're going to jump right on in. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your prophetic word. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for the Holy Ghost of God. So uh, I die right now, Lord, to myself so you can live and breathe through me and talk to me and let your word be released. And let me say what you want says you can be glorified in all things. And I thank you for it and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. All right. All right, hold on. Let me tell my Facebook people that I'm here. Because there's a notification that go, <clears throat> goes out when I'm live, but <clears throat> everybody doesn't always see it. So, okay. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, just really have to praise God because I must be, the Lord must be using me because it's not me, but I'm saying <clears throat> when the enemy fights you that hard, when the enemy is always <laughs> going after you like that, then God must be, you know, using your life. And uh, or else the enemy wouldn't fight you that hard. <clears throat> and it's uh, really true about how you got to. Uh, you got to uh, keep uh, hanging on in there. You got to keep pushing through. You got to keep. Fighting through. And so anyway. So let me put the title. And I'll put that on the Okay, still just went off some folks to show up. Okay. Okay. okay, something happened. I think it dropped me. Wow. So as usual, Facebook uh, makes things harder than they need to be <laughs> because you can't do anything simply. You can't do anything simply. Like, you know, add a person, leave a chat, do whatever. Can't do simple stuff. It's always complicated. Okay, I'm trying to add somebody to this chat. 
and they have every option except add somebody because that's what I'm trying to do. Oh, yeah, they got, you know, there it is. Change emojis and blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, just waiting on some folks to show up, but I'm going to head on and get started. I think I see my sister typing me something now. All right. Okay, so we're just going to dive on in cuz I need to uh I need to release this word. Okay, today's prophetic word is whisper. It's on the screen. You ought to be able to see that, but in case you're listening to me somewhere else and you can't see the screen, today's prophetic word is whisper. Okay, whisper. So what does that mean? What is that talking about? Uh, what does the Holy Ghost want us to get out of that? <clears throat> so I will give you the uh, foundational scripture. The foundational scripture is Isaiah 30 and 15. Isaiah 30 and 15. Uh, let's look at a couple of different translations. We're going to look first and look at the Berean study Bible for the Lord God, the Holy one of Israel has said by repentance and rest, you would be saved. Your strength would lie in quiet confidence, but you were not willing. New international version. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy one of Israel says in repentance and rest is your salvation and quietness and trust is your strength, but you would have none of it. English Standard Version, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and, and trust shall be your strength, but you were unwilling. Uh, King James Bible, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Let's look at that. Okay, now in the NIV version, uh, and in the New Living Translation, it says, this is what the sovereign Lord, the sovereign Lord. OK, what does it mean to be sovereign? Do you know what sovereign means? What sovereign means is that you are Lord over all. It means that you are the in the highest position. It means that no one is above you. And God himself says it all the time that I am God and beside me, there is no other. But it's also above him. There is no other. Uh, sovereign means that you have sovereign rights, ownership rights. You are the landlord. You are the Lord. Uh, whatever it is that you're dealing with, uh, fully and completely belongs to you. You have the first say, the bottom say, the last say. And uh, uh, all the says in between. Okay. All right. I'm going to have to pray for my sister. Uh, okay. And all the says in between. That's what it means to be sovereign. OK, so God is saying that he's the sovereign. He's the Lord God. He's the sovereign. He's the one over all. Why is that important? Because God wants you to know that you can trust him because his word cannot be broken and his judgments cannot be overturned and his promises cannot fail. So God is letting you know that he doesn't have a peer. There's nobody that the Lord has to ask permission from. He doesn't have to get permission from any, any other entity. Because he's sovereign, he's Lord of overall. 
He's Lord over all by creation and he's Lord over all by redemption, meaning that God is sovereign because he made everything that there is. And the name of Jesus is above every name because Jesus bought everything back with his blood. You see that? So any way you want to uh, slice it, any way you want to look at it, God is sovereign. God is the one above all. And God is telling you that again, so you can trust him. God is telling you that again, so you don't have to worry about what he says so that you can know that he is rock solid. And so that you can know that regardless of what God promises you, no matter how crazy it might sound to you, no matter how strange it might sound to you, no matter what, it's solid. Okay. So he says, the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, the Holy One of Israel. Now, what does it mean to be holy? Let's look at that word, holy. Uh, sacred, holy, uh, sacred, uh, saint, a sanctuary. So what holiness has to do with uh, holiness, part of it means a consecration or that which is set apart for divine use. Holiness also represents purity. And what it means is that it's pure through and through. So in other words, that's another encouragement to God from you to let you know that his words are pure, that he means exactly what he says. Of course, an Adobe Flash player wants to do an update while I'm doing my prophetic word, okay. So, so you can count on what God says to be above any other voice you might hear, but you can also count on what God says to be pure. Okay, there's no darkness in it. There's no uh, corruption in it. There's no, the Bible says there's not even a shadow of turning with God. So in other words, when God tells you that he's holy, you can count on what he's saying to be pure and true. Not just true, but pure and true. There's no darkness. There's no mess in it, if you will. Okay. So after he introduces himself, he then says this. This is what the sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says. Because remember, God wastes no words. That's why we have to go over stuff like that. In repentance and rest is your salvation. I like the King James Version. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. Now, that's very important. That's very important. In repentance and rest is your salvation. Now, what did the Bible just tell you? Okay, the Bible just told you something very, very important. The Bible says that your salvation, your saving, is in returning and rest or repentance and rest okay now when it says salvation or you would be saved it means to deliver uh to be open wide or free so deliverance to be safe to be free or to secure your freedom so in other words god says for you to be saved to be delivered to be free to be opened to be safe and to secure your deliverance god says that happens in repentance and rest okay what does that mean? What that means is that to repent means to change your mind. A lot of people get confused about what the word repentance actually means, but to repent means to change your mind. And it specifically means to change your mind with uh, a focus on what God is saying. So you're going from what you thought and what you said to what God thought and God said. That's actually what it means to repent. It means to change your mind. That's literally what it means. You can look that up in the Greek. So what God is saying is that the way you get saved, the way you get delivered, the way you get set free is to turn from what you were thinking, turn from what you were doing, turn from what you thought and turn to me. Okay. So there's that. But there's also, it says repentance and rest. And that's what I was talking about before. And what that means in no uncertain terms is that God wants you to trust him. God wants you to rest in him. Okay. And people really, really need rest. What does that mean? That means that um, God's salvation comes through grace and grace is unmerited favor. So in other words, you don't have to earn it. Okay, you don't have to earn your blessings from God. I know a lot of people get confused about that. 
you actually do not have to earn your blessings from God. God has already decided to bless you before he made the world. <coughs> God already decided what he wanted to give you and who he wanted you to be and what he wanted you to have before he ever made anything. So you actually don't have to earn your blessings from God. Oh, let me get this out the shot. I don't like it in the shot. So you actually don't have to earn your blessings from God. What you do have to do is allow God to get you to where he wants you to be. You have to allow God to work on you, to work on your character, work on your thought, work on your choices, work on your habits, work on your life so that he can line you up or position you for the blessing he already has for you so that you God had already decided that he was going to put Joseph in charge of the economy of Egypt way before Joseph was born, before God made the world, God or preordained Joseph for that role. But what God did when Joseph got sold into captivity between the ages of 7 and 30, what God did was prepare Joseph that he handle so that he could handle, so that he could handle what God had already prepared for him. And that's why I think we're a little bit confused. Because you don't have to earn your blessings uh, from God, okay? Because the Bible says in repentance and rest, part of the translation there means uh, favor. God's favor is unmerited. Our favor we have as Christians is because of Jesus. God takes the righteousness of Christ and applies that to our account. It's not something that we earn. God takes the blood of Jesus and applies his blood to our sins and remits our sins from our account. Then God takes the righteousness of Jesus, the righteous life that Jesus lived, and applies that to our account, and we're made righteous in him. We get the benefit of Jesus' life, and then God gives us the authority to use Jesus' name so we can use his name that's named as above every name. Okay, we don't earn any of that. We don't get that because we deserve it, because nobody deserves it. If the kingdom of heaven was based on deserve, would nobody be in it but Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and the angels that didn't sin against God and follow Lucifer? OK, there's not a human that would be in the kingdom if it was based on earning or deserving. And that's where people get confused because you do not, again, have to earn your blessings from God. You do not have to uh, earn them. It's not based on anything that you do. So the Lord says that we have to learn how to repent, which means we have to learn how to change our minds and come back to him. Sometimes we can get in this life, sometimes it's easy to get far away from the Lord and you didn't even notice or, or whatever. And one of the ways that happens is just with busyness, just busyness, just, you know, if you are trying to build anything or sometimes if you're just trying to maintain and survive, it's the easiest thing in the world for your life to get busy to the extreme. Now, I know a little something about that. I'm not just talking off the top of my head, top of my ball head about that little subject. I know something about being busy to the extreme. And I know something about having an around the clock schedule. So let me tell you something about when you're an author and or when you're an entrepreneur. Let me tell you about being both an author and an entrepreneur. When you are both, when you are either an author or an entrepreneur, or you're both, there are going to come times in your life and sometimes more often than not, where you have to go on 24 seven watch. And going on 24 seven watch means uh, on the business side, there's a whole bunch of things you have to get done because you have deadlines or nobody else can do them or you're behind or whatever. On the creative side, on the author side, on the writing side, you're going to have times where you seclude yourself, where you lock yourself up and you uh, and you don't do anything but focus on the book. OK, because that's the only way you're ever going to get anything done. OK. So that being the case, that's one example of how, how uh, easy it is to get so busy that you get far away from the Lord. You get far away from the Lord. You, you, you stop spending time with him when you start off your day or you don't pray with the fervor that you're used to. Or you don't spend time in the word that you're used to or any number of things can happen. Well, the Bible tells you that that's normal. We always have to fight to stay faithful to Jesus. The Lord will always be faithful to us. That faithfulness is not a problem for God. God will show up every day, just like he said he would, because he said in the Lord's prayer, give us this day our daily bread. 
the Lord will show up every day. He's amazing. He's amazing. There's nobody else like God anywhere under any circumstances where you ever find anybody comparable to the Lord. But the Lord did about being faithful to us. We have to learn how to be faithful to him. And Uh oh, look like my screen. Or whatever. That his salvation has to do. That means I'm trying to see because see that's what Job had to I'm this person because I did this or because I don't do that or because of my of my education or because of any attribute that you want to try. Your rest is in the favor of God. It's in the favor of God. It's in the favor of God. So in other words, it's in his unmerited favor. We don't have to earn it and we don't have to deserve it. And that's why a lot of people don't get saved because they think they have to earn it. They think you have to be good enough. They think you have to get yourself together first and then come to God. It doesn't work that way. You don't get yourself saved and you don't keep yourself saved. That's all done by his grace. What you do is HBO, hear, believe, and obey. You hear what God has to say. You believe him and you do what the Lord tells you to do. Okay? But you don't have to earn it. You can't earn it. What if God told you you had to earn it? What do you think you could do to earn your salvation? There's nothing you could do. See that? So God says that in returning and rest, you is your salvation. And then it goes in quietness and confidence is your strength. The strength would lie in quiet confidence and quietness and trust is your strength, but you would have none of it. And that's what I've been trying to get to because that's what the Holy Ghost wanted to show me how to apply this scripture to our lives today. And here it is. A lot of people are looking for God to answer in the spectacular or they're looking for God to answer uh, with volume or in the loudness, okay? God doesn't always answer with volume. It doesn't mean he's not answering, but God doesn't always answer with volume. God doesn't always answer with loudness, okay? So this verse is trying to let you know that in quietness and confidence. So in other words, the Holy Ghost wanted me to release that God wants you to look for the still small voice. God wants you to look for him in quietness because a whole lot of y'all, again, are trying to find the Lord in loudness. God wants you to look for him in quietness. Look for the still small voice because that's where your answer is going to be. So in returning and rest, are we saved? and changing our minds and turning from our way, our way of doing things, and in rest and trusting in the favor of God and not our own works. That's how we get delivered. And then God says, when you need strength to make it through anything, God said, I'm in the quietness uh, and the confidence to trust you have in me. The quietness is where the Lord is. And again, Naaman made that mistake. Naaman, long story short, Naaman was a great warrior and he had great exploits and Naaman was famous. But Naaman also was a leper. He had leprosy. He had a patch of leprosy on his body and he was ashamed of it. So he wanted, he asked the prophet um, to, uh, it was either Elijah or Elisha, I forget which one, but he asked the prophet to heal him of that leprosy. Elisha didn't even come out of his tent. He just told Naaman to go wash in the Jordan seven times and he'd be cleansed. And Naaman got really mad. He got really, really angry 
to the point where he's like, I thought you was going to come out here and wave your hand or, or say something loud or make a big prayer. I thought it was going to be this dramatic thing. And now you're telling me to go wash in the dirty river? Naaman was like, later for this. And his servant had to had to plead with him and had to work with him and said, Naaman, Naaman, sir, if the, if the prophet had told you to do something spectacular as you wanted, you would have done it, right? And Naaman was like, well, yeah. So then his servant was like, well, cleansed is cleansed. Well, healed is healed. What difference does it make how it happens? Because what you wanted was for it to happen. So his, his servant literally had to talk Naaman down because Naaman was so mad at, at the prophet that it didn't happen the way he thought it was going to happen. And that's what the Holy Ghost is causing me to release to you today, that the Lord says where he is, is in quietness and confidence, is in the still small voice and in you trusting in him. It's not in your efforts. It's not in your righteousness. That's how you're going to get delivered. The Lord said that's the way his salvation works. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Now, I'm going to say this a little bit, and then I'm going to be through. Why is that important? Because we live in times where ain't no rest nowhere. Where can you rest now? Where can you turn to now? You name me one institution that you can turn to now that you can rest in. Just name me one. Where is it now that you can rest? There's no place. <laughs> There's no place now that you can rest. Okay. Because every institution we know, every place we go, we have businesses shutting down. We have our entire way of life has been upended. So where can you go? Now, remember before the coup hit, what they were starting to do was they were starting to build bulletproof walls inside of schools, if you didn't know that. They had already done, uh, implemented active shooter drills in public school. So they were basically like, they were accepting that this is a part of your life now when you are a school child, that there's liable to be someone that breaks in on your campus, no matter what your agents are shooting up the place. And this is what you do if that happens. Well, they were actually building walls uh, that were being fitted into the schools where you could hide behind the walls and the walls would be bulletproof. That's what they were doing before the coof hits. So in other words, they had accepted, they spent money, spent money to put bulletproof walls in schools. That's what they were implementing before the coup hit. So what that means is that they had accepted that possibly losing your child to gun violence was now a way of life in America. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> they had accepted that possibly losing your child through gun violence was now a way of life in America. In other words, it's a hazard of going to public school. Your kid might get shot. They had accepted that before the coup hit. So I'm just using that as an example to show you that where can you rest? Can you rest in politics? Can you rest in education? Can you, where can you rest? What's helping you now? All the stuff that we thought was important, what's helping you now? Okay, see, there's no rest anywhere but in Christ. Okay, that's what the Lord has been trying to tell us all along, but uh, it's plain as day in your face right now that you can't rest anywhere but in Christ. Where else are you going to rest? Where else are you going to go? What else, you know, can you do? So the Lord is saying that look for him in the still small voice. Look for him in quietness and confidence. Look for him to where you don't, uh, you're not trusting in anything uh, that has to do with your righteousness, but you're trusting in him, okay? All right, if I have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Uh, this Thursday is no more genies, so I gotta get on here live, seven o'clock this Thursday. Uh, if I'm having internet problems still on Thursday, then I'll upload the video, but one way or another, the teaching will be there, so definitely check it out. I'll be back next Sunday, where I go 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, I apologize for coming on late uh, this time. Had just more internet stuff, but whatever. So anyway, if we got any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. Okay. Uh, you know what? I am going to copy that scripture. I'm going to...
copy that scripture because it's Isaiah 30, 15. So I'll put that down in the chat so you can see that, okay? All right, no prayer requests, and that's it for this week. Uh, thanks to those of you that watch me live. Thanks to those of you that are watching the replay. I'm actually going to put this link in the group chat so uh, everybody can uh, watch it if they didn't uh, get a chance to check it out live, okay? All right, I will see you this Thursday, 7 o'clock p.m. for No More Genies, and I'll see you next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Hold on, let me ask the Holy Ghost if there's anything else he wants me to say before I go. Nope, I think that's it. Okay, so I'll see you this Thursday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, and I'll see you next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for the next weekly live prophetic work. Amen, and God bless.